Okay, I'm just getting up. I'll be there as soon as I can. And I hung up the phone. I got out of bed and started getting my things together and getting dressed. A short while after my phone rang again and it was my sister. I answered and in a calm, steady voice, she said, she's gone. Okay, I'm nearly ready. I'll be leaving soon. There's roadworks, so it might take me a little bit longer. I'll probably see you in an hour and a half, two hours. And I hung up. Then I screamed. To that day in my life, I'd never felt physical pain like that before. I suddenly understood the real meaning of your heart breaking. I wanted to claw at my chest and make it stop. But nothing I was gonna do was gonna make it stop. That was the moment I heard that I'd lost my mum. She had been sick for what felt like such a long time. When the cancer had returned, I knew it was the beginning of the end. She'd fought it so well the first time. She'd made changes to her lifestyle and she defied all odds and got into remission. They were stunned. So when it came back, I knew that that was gonna be it. We had a good few months together, more than many people would get with such a rare aggressive diagnosis. And I'm so grateful for that time. I still beat myself up that I didn't spend every second of every day with her, but when you're in that moment, you don't. It just doesn't compute that the end is the end. That you will never see that person again. I got to the hospice where she had been for the last few days. She had deteriorated so fast. And in a way that was a blessing because I know that inside her head, she'd have been screaming and not being able to get up and do stuff and host people coming round. In a way, it was nice that she passed away in the hospice and they were able to take care of everything and we could just be with her. The night before she passed away, I'd been there, we'd all been there. We didn't know it was necessarily the last night. And as I left, I'd said a little catchphrase that we'd been saying since I was a child. Whenever one of us went to bed, one would say nighty nighty and the other would say pajamas pajamas. She'd been so weak that evening that she had hardly said a word, but her last words to me were pajamas pajamas. <laughs> oh. Grief is a terrible and painful thing, but it's such a part of life. It shaped who I am today. It shaped what I do with my life. Particularly after I had my daughter a few years later. I discovered I was pregnant in the September and then the October following was the one year anniversary of mum passing away. I was still in my very early stages of grief. Some days I still feel like I'm in my very early stages of grief. But once I knew I was carrying another human and once I saw her and felt the love, intense love for her, I knew I would do anything for her. 
And a big part of that was trying to stop or delay her ever feeling this intense sorrow that I was feeling. I will do whatever I can to prolong my life. To stay fit and healthy, to do the things with my daughter that she deserves. My mum never even got to know I was pregnant. In fact, she told my sister she didn't think I'd ever get to be a mum. The doctors didn't think so either. I want to be a granny one day. I want to see her living out a happy and fulfilled life. I hadn't reached that point in my life when I lost my mum. Yes, we'd had some great adventures, but she didn't leave this world knowing that I was settled in who I was and what I was doing. She left too soon. Now, we cannot know exactly why she got the cancer. It wasn't a specific cancer that's, that's a very obvious thing. If she'd got melanoma, we'd have kind of understood because she spent a lot of time in the sun and on sunbeds. If she'd been a heavy smoker, lung cancer wouldn't make sense. But she had a rare aggressive T-cell lymphoma. It's part of the leukemia family. It's kind of an all everywhere kind of cancer. There wasn't anything obvious to blame. She died in a year where we lost a lot of famous names to cancer. Where we lost a lot of mums within my friendship group from school. There seemed to be something within that generation that's gone wrong. Could it be our lifestyle is at fault here? These are the things I think through constantly when I'm making the decisions with how I live my life. These are part of the reasons that I am so focused on my health and fitness. That I am so passionate about health and fitness. That I can't understand why people don't care what they put in their bodies. I will do anything to stop my daughter from feeling the pain that I felt at losing my mum so early. Some people may call that a judgment or shaming. This is my truth. This isn't meant to shame or judge you. This is my story. And if it inspires you to make the changes that you need to make, then amazing. I toyed a long time with whether I should share this or not. But I have always promised that I would be open and honest with you. And this is such an important part of why I value my physical health. That how could I not include it today? I will do anything for my daughter. And if that means I'm getting up at stupid o'clock in the morning so I can fit in exercise because exercise may prolong my life, I'm going to do it. Now people may shout at me that there's not definitive research that it has this effect and that effect. But I'm not willing to take the risk. There's more research to say that it is good for you. We live such sedate lives now compared to how we used to be when we had to work the land because we didn't have tractors or back when we were cavemen and things. It seems like as our lifestyles have changed, our health has deteriorated. There's got to be something in that. I will do whatever it takes to stop my daughter's heart from breaking. And when I leave this earth, I will leave old 
and happy and she will feel like she had a life with her mum. <laughs> and one day maybe she'll watch this video and understand why I do the things I do. Why mummy was always so careful with the things she ate and the things I let her eat. Why mummy encouraged her to do exercise. Why mummy would go out for a run instead of just sitting on the sofa. This is my truth and my story. And I hope by putting it out there, it can help someone anyone. Thank you for watching. I know this is quite a tough subject and I very much risk <laughs> being trolled for judgment on this kind of topic. Please let me know if this resonated with you. If you've recently lost someone and you'd like to reach out, then do email me. And remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be.